Welcome. We bid you welcome. John Clouser, Johnny Metal, the Metal Dad, coming to you from my music corner of the world. And I am sitting here with my fellow delirious nomad, my fellow nervous man, the one who has the laugh about him, who is the conqueror. And for the sake of heaven, it's just shut up, John. John, the music nut, how you doing, brother? I'm laughing at all of you. How you doing? <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> I don't know where all that came from, but uh, yes, <laughs> yes, Armored Saints. I wish I had a catchy uh, series title for this, like we did with Wasp. You know, the Wasp Wednesday was at least had a good ring to it. I just haven't figured out a good one for Armored Saint, but but uh, Armored Saint Nation. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed last week's look at March of the Saint. Today we take a little look at their second album here. Delirious Nomad and John, you have got all the sign. You got the sign copy going on. Tell me about this really quickly. You've got me intrigued. Well, if you went to see Wasp's last tour last year with Armored Saint, mm -hmm. they were selling their first three albums on Digipack, and they were all signed. So this one and the next one we're going to talk about, I have signed copies. And they, were 20, I, and they were twenty dollars. And how did I miss that at the merch table? Well, because nobody was at the merch table when they gave us the early pass at the Wasp show. Because I because I did the VIP for all those who don't remember, right? And but there's nobody at the Armored Saint table, so we didn't we didn't I didn't go through any of that stuff. So I didn't even look at that. And now I am kicking myself in the rear end for that. Oh, jeez! Mm -hmm. Wow, go. that's awesome, man. Well, Delirious Nomad. So, uh, John, I'm going to let you kick it off. Uh, I, I I was a bad boy, and I didn't get a chance to do my my chart research on this one. So uh, I'm going to let you kick this off, and uh, let's, let's go through the songs. All right. Thank you, John. I think chart-wise, I didn't do my research, but just remembering from reading Bo Billboard back in the day, it was probably similar – to March of the Saint, it probably got around late in the 130s or 140s. Um, I, I know it didn't reach the top 100. Yeah. On the board, but I'm, lo I'm looking at, I just looked at Wikipedia. It's not even showing a chart reference. Oh, uh, geez. I know it charted. I know yeah, it, it had to. Have. I think the first three charted. So, anyway, this was from November 4th, 1985, Delirious Nomad, tight album. We got 42 minutes of killer metal here we got max norman producing here now for those of you growing up in the 80s and listening to metal you know that max norman's name he did the first three um studio albums with ozzy osbourne as well as the two live albums speak of the devil and ozzy osbourne randy Rhodes tribute he also did y and t's black tiger uh -huh. he did if this is more singer songwriter, but great rock songwriter, one of the best songwriters ever was, in my opinion, Ian Hunter. He did All the Good Ones Are Taken from 83, I believe. He did Grim Reaper's Rock You in Hell. And he also did a lot of other heavy metal albums that you may know of, such as Loudness's first three albums, including Thunder in the East and Lightning Strikes. Actually, he did three of their first three of their first four or five albums i i don't believe oh, oh, in, in american releases there was they had right. a number of japan releases pr prior to that but yeah right correct american yeah. Releases. u.s releases yeah not to japan they had like five or six albums in japan before thunder east came out here and killer States. ones at, and killer ones at that that's true they did a uh, dangerous toys debut did um he did dirty looks cool for cool from the wire i'm going to see them in a few weeks we got Lynch Mob's Wicked Sensation. They did Death, Death Angel, Act 3. They did Sabotage, Power of the Night. They did Malice, License to Kill. They did first, they did Three Arms by Coney Hatch. And they, he actually, they actually, he actually did Megadeth's Countdown to Extinction and Euthanasia, which I didn't realize until I did the I research. about that. Yeah, those are good albums. I mean, I'm a Rusted Peace guy. Those yeah. albums were very, very good as well. Yeah. yeah, they were. Absolutely. So, Furious Nomad. Now, in this album, it is recorded a little better 
then March of the Saint was with Michael James Jackson. With this album, it's a better recording. The highs aren't quite as high song-wise, but you see them becoming, you hear them becoming better musicians. It's more musically developed. And I think it's a more consistent album than March of the Saint. Maybe the highs aren't quite as high like those first three tracks on March of the Saint, but this is very good. First song is Long Before I Die. They play that live in this day. That is a smoking opener. Very menacing. You got this great killer, killer riffs. There's these nice space between the riffs, which make the song all that much heavier. You got a great solo from Dave Pritchard here. Excellent opener. Nervous Man, this is the song that actually says the title Delirious Nomad. And a lot of people might think it's called Delirious Nomad. But that is a killer track as well. Um, it They did this on Saints Will Conquer, Conquer, the live EP. They did on Metal Blade. That was a spectacular version. Over the Edge has a really cool groove to it. Oh, oh, it's, oh. What a groove on this. Great. And this is a darker song musically and and lyrically this is very good the laugh kicks ass um this is the catchiest song great lyric um it's great anthem about people doubting you and now i got, and now i did what i said that i was gonna do and now i'm laughing at you mm -hmm. excellent track conqueror kicks ass there's another one you're gonna hear me say these words quite a bit this reminds you a little bit of saxon Mm -hmm. It's a la um, denim and leather, uh, wheels of steel, strong arm of the law, power and the glory. It's got that. It's very fat. It's it's a faster paced song, but it's got those. It's got that same delivery like Saxon. Great vocal here from John Bush throughout as you have throughout the album again. Great chorus. Great riff. For the sake of heaviness. OK, that's that's decent. It's there's some good guitar lines on it. This is a more atmospheric track. It's it's pretty cool. Aftermath. This might be my favorite song on the album. Aftermath starts with this great instrumental, which is very musically strong. And then when it goes into the song proper, it starts out really a slow and um, spooky. Um, the great guitar lines here from Dave again, and then it goes into the chorus, which is more it goes from the soft to the loud, and it works. Excellent track, great guitar work here. Um, and just to, before we go deeper into this, Phil Sandoval left before the recording of this album, so he has the first guitar solo on Over the Edge and some additional rhythm guitar in Aftermath. Outside of that, that's all. This is all Dave Pritchard. Yeah. So just to mention, I'm sorry I didn't say it earlier, but after that, you got the same lineup as before. You got you got Joey Vera on bass, Dave Pritchard on guitar, John Bush on vocals, and Gonzo Sandoval on drums. So it's an excellent track here in Aftermath. This is my favorite song on the album. Into the Hole is very solid. Um, good chorus on here, very straight ahead. There are um, some there are some different musical things they go into here. It's a little different from the first album. You're never alone. I like that quite a bit as well. That's a n nice tale of revenge lyric in this one. And then released that borders on speed metal. Yeah. Lyrically, we'll get more into that later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, when we get if you go into the rock candy remaster, and this is not the rock candy one that I held up, this is the one that they Metal Blade put back out on Ditcher Pack. You have the la you have a demo of the laugh, and you have a rough mix of You're Never Alone on here. So as far as the songs, I think the first five and track seven are killer. Mm -hmm. The rest of the album's very solid. There's no duds on here. It's very 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 strong album i think it's recorded better i would give this an 8.5 just like i did march of the saint 
if you like March of the Saint, you have to own Delirious Nomad. It's, it's as well. It's a better album musically. They go into darker themes here. And better, better lyrically, for the most part, they're still spot on. Dave Pritchard plays his ass off on here. Um, and uh, highly recommend this one. I go 8.5. That's good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. That, that is that is some very strong stuff. And, you know, it, honestly, I don't even know how much more I can add to this. <laughs> Boy, Thanks. that's just, uh, I, I probably would be right with you on the 8.5 for the mm -hmm. ranking. Um, you know, the big, the, to me, to me, Dave Pritchard and Joey Vera just, boom, this is like, this is almost like a coming out party because you feel like you're really hearing Joey a lot better on this album than you did the March of the Saint. That's true. And of course, now with Dave having to do most of the guitar duties himself, he he gets that he gets that ability to, to really shine and my goodness does he shine on this album and we'll talk more about him on raising fear um loved long before i die great opening song again you in my notes i'm writing here joey's presence so strong you know it's just you just love hearing that locked in with gonzo um i you know kind of talks about relationship issues and things of that nature. So that's kind of what you're getting here. Um, a, a nervous man uh, with that raw, the raw guitar, great groove during the solo, kind of has like an addiction-like feel, you know, kind of in the lyrics, you know, for those who who follow in the lyrics. Um, over the edge, my gosh, you you, you said it all. That groove. That dum -ba -bam -bam -ba -da 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 -ba yeah. Oh my God, that thing crushes. Absolutely crushing. Um, again, kind of that that prison feel in the lyrics, but I love the solo section. My gosh, yeah. there's so much tasty stuff in that solo section. Um, just some of my, you know, even, even to the part where they slowed it down, bringing that volume down, you get those nice twists and turns and, oh boy, just, ah. Just I, I thought he they, they did a great job with the arrangement on that song. It was perfect. Um, like you say about the laugh, extremely catchy chorus. You know, like you say, you know, I was the one that was down and out, but now look now look where I am and look where you are. Ha ha ha. You know, mm -hmm. uh, great track. Um, Conquer. I, I I put down here intense song, kind of going into battle. You know, just raw in your face. Great album closer. You know, it's what, how do they always say about side closer or side closers rather, not album closer, yeah. side closer. You want to be turned, you want to be, you want to make sure it's really a strong thing so you can turn it over. You know, you want to hear that side too, you know, and, 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 right. and so side two kicks off with that for the sake of heaviness, which the vibe I get from this song here is like, um, the, I think lyrically, it's like, I think. You could tell that they were getting held down, that Chrysalis just didn't know what to do with them. Yeah. And I and I kind of almost feel like this is a song that kind of and I think there's gonna be a lot of songs that we'll talk about both on this and on Raising Fear that will point that in that direction where there's this is this is their song. This is like, hey, hey Chrysalis, listen to this. You all are making us what we don't need to be. We're trying to stick to our guns, and you're watering us down some. That was the kind of vibe I got from from the sake of happiness. I thought great, uh, a good moshable grinding ending to the song. Um, almost kind of felt like a little bit of a little little priest like in the solo mm -hmm. section at times, but I thought it was very very good. Um, Aftermath has that epic feel with the post like a post apocalyptic kind of um, lyrics. Same within the, in the whole uh, getting ready for going into the post apocalyptic, you know. I guess it's kind of evident in the uh, in the cover here with the mushroom cloud. I guess is what he's looking at. But uh, that's true. Um, but here again, um, I, I just thought it was another very heavy melodic twists into the song. Uh, just another, just another great, uh, great Armored Saint song. I just really thought they really brought it on this one. That was the one thing. Um, you still heard you heard their influences pretty strong on March of the Saint. 
maybe the influences are here, but they have made it to where it's their own now. It That's is right. their own sound. It's not, they're not still ripping priest off. They're still not ripping off new album bands or anything like that. No, this, they have figured out how to make that all of their own and mm-hmm. without, they can still be aggressive, but not like 300 miles an hour kind of aggressive. You still got John Bush bringing a, a wonderful, raw, aggressive vocal without being so over the top and cookie monster ish. But right. he, and and so he he just has this, and it's a very uh what's what's another word? Um confident. Yes. Confident. Yes. Um you're never alone, kind of a prog metal groove. I I <laughs> I didn't. I don't know if I took this as a revenge tale. I looked at it as more as like a serial killer. I I think I when I looked at the lyrics in this, I kind of some of it kind of looked like 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 you're in the in Friday the Thirteenth territory. You know, uh, you keep acting the way you do, and soon you'll be out the door. I won't take things so mildly. I'll turn you into morbid gore. You know, to me, it's like I I almost I almost yeah. hear like I almost hear some Jason and Michael Myers stuff there for me. I don't maybe uh, or what was that full sadistic victim victim or full sadistic whims. I didn't come here for a sing along or whistle a pretty hymn. Although you feel calm, you sunk into deadly. You know, so I get it. I just went Friday the Thirteenth here, but that's just me. Uh, <laughs> you know, still you're feeling safe. Got no reason to be afraid. You're you're never alone with a madman at all. You know, the madman on your trail kind of thing to me. You just never that, that anyway. That's I thought it was a great song. Released lyrically to me, this is a throwaway song. Musically, it's wonderful. You get a you get Joey on on lead bass here, and then you get Dave just ripping it on so on guitar. Uh lyrically, this is <laughs> I'm like, come on, guys, really? <laughs> Did you really need to go there? <laughs> no um that's as far as i'll go with this song <laughs> but musically musically this is a great song fine album closer it's just a shame that they wasted a crap a crap lyric on it but uh <laughs> or just it or just so cheesy i mean right. so, i mean this is right. like almost this is like almost spinal tap bad mm. you know if you're if you yeah you know, if you stop to think about it i mean this Maybe it's not as bad as Big Bottom or Sex Farm, but boy, it's darn close. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know. Um, so anyway, so uh, the Max Norman production, you know, wetted it up a little bit. I thought it was good. So yeah, uh, eight point five. It was probably what I would give this. Again, just a really strong, just a great follow up. I thought, you know, uh, and again, just it's just a shame that Chrysalis just didn't know what to do with these guys. Exactly. So, so John, I don't know if you've got some tour information for what they did with this one, and yeah. uh, see how see how Chrysalis marketed them in their tours. Well, that was another issue again. Uh, so, they let me open... let me guess. They, let me guess. They toured with Huey Lewis in the news. Uh oh, wait. No. <laughs> Although, while he's looking this up, I didn't know this, but John Bush is actually in. The heart of rock and roll video is he really he makes a quick little cameo appearance i think i think there was like i think in the heart of rock and roll video when he does the when they he talks about la and the sunset strip LA, and hollywood and the, and the sunset, sunset strip, strip. It's no place i'd rather be but then i think there's like the metal influence that they talk about I mm-hmm. think I think he's he makes it. I think it's that's actually John Bush that makes a little cameo appearance and mm. he get, getting out of the limo or something as the hair metal guy. So mm. I never realized that. <laughs> I, I need to go back to watch it. I need to go back to watch the video. I just saw that on Wikipedia. And I thought it was interesting, but anyway. So there you go. Okay. Well, they played a lot of similar clubs as before. They couldn't get onto a big tour. They did open for Metallica on Master of Puppets, but Master of Puppets was when they were really starting to come of age. Metallica in 86 were opening for Ozzy Osbourne. So by the time they were headlining, they're playing the Aragon Ballroom, and that is when they opened for Metallica. Outside of that, they played Arcadia Theater in Dallas, Majestic Theater in San Antonio, Celebrity Theater in Phoenix, California Theater in San Diego. All those states were with Saxon, hmm. who weren't able to break in the states either. And by this point, 
Saxon sound was becoming more Americanized to try to break through. He also played, he also played at least one date with Heretic. You remember that band? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, Mike Howe from, who would go on to Metal Church, mm. played on an album of them. Uh, it was a different band before him. Uh, I mean, not a different band, but it was a different sound because Metal Blade put like a five song EP by them. And uh, I they had a song called Torture Knows No Boundary, which I thought it was I think that was the name of the album. But there was a song about Jack the Ripper, which was like really, really cool. But the vocalist was kind of that typical Metal Blade kind of sound. He just, you know, it wasn't a really good refined voice. He was decent, but if. It, he was no Mike Howell by any stretch of the imagination. So, right. yeah, Heretic, great band. Great, great mm -hmm. band. Excellent. Now, they did play some headline dates. They did headline Lamores in Brooklyn. And they played with Striper at the Orpheum Theater. It looks like the Bismarck Theater they played with Striper. They did get one date with Ted Nugent at the Lansing Civic Center in Lansing, Michigan. And okay. they got a date with Judas Priest at Wing Stadium. Hmm. But outside of that, I mean, they couldn't catch on to a big headliner, like a big band for a long period of time. Now, yeah. they did play from Raising Fear. They did play um, Terror. They played Book of Blood. They played Human Vulture. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Those songs that I was mentioning are all going to be on Raising, on Raising Fear, but they were playing them at the Troubadour. Oh, in November of 86 before the Raising Fear album came out. So they played <laughs> five songs from Raising Fear before wow. Raising Fear came out in 87 at the Troubadour in West Hollywood. Huh. Test, so, testing the testing the, the audience with it, I guess. Yes, they were. Oh, they also played a couple dates with the gods. G -O -T -T. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Okay. And it were um and they 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 opened for Y and T for a few dates on this tour as well. But again, you know, they just couldn't latch on to a big name. Just like well, the first time you had three bands who were at the same level in '84 with them, Metallica and Wasp, and we know where their careers went, especially Metallica. Mm -hmm. So. So, yes, I mean, when they were able to go out and play, they were kicking butt, but they couldn't get a lot of dates live. Right. For Delirious right. Nomad. Yeah, and that's a shame because, man, that was a, as you listen to this album, it's just such, so, so overlooked, you mm -hmm. know, but again, I think, you know, here we are getting into, uh, you know, 1990 or 1985, 1986, you know, at this point, gosh, you have everybody coming out with something. You know, there was a lot of bands that were just, you know, Metal Blade was coming out with a lot of stuff. Combat had a lot of different stuff. You had all these different styles coming out. There was just everywhere you turn, there was, you know, either a Motley Crue wannabe, an ACDC wannabe, and another Aerosmith wannabe, or this of, of this wannabe, and, you know, stuff like that. Man, it's just... You know, just everybody was coming out with stuff and just not everybody could get. Yeah. And the labels just weren't uh, weren't uh, backing them back in the bands quite the, the way they could have. So, they weren't. No so there you go. Well, uh, so, yeah. Delirious Nomad, folks. So Armored Saint Nation, I didn't get to hear from you, so I don't know what you all got to say about this album. So I hope you get to share it in the comments uh like share subscribe you know all the lingo let us know hopefully you get to watch this when it comes out um in the live chat you know join us join us in the when we're, when we're able to be there and uh, let us know what you think about this so um so for my fellow delirious nomad john the music nut the five count as i gotta hold my hand up right there uh johnny clouds or johnny metal the metal dad from my music corner we will see you soon when we go raise some fear. Take care. Take care.